Hi there, this is John Broadhead from Roland, and we're here today to talk about the brand new M5000 Live mixing console. It's the latest console in our line of uh, great pro audio products from Roland, part of uh, what's known as the vMixing system. And today, we're going to give you just a brief overview of the power that's in this console. It's based on what we call the ORCA platform, and that is OHR. CA. So let's pick apart each one of those. First of all, the open factor. This console with the rear panel uh, with the REAC has expansion slots. So it's, it's able to connect to pretty well any popular network protocol that's available. So that's uh, the REAC, the Roland network, which is a 40 by 40 at 96K. It's also Dante capable, also MADI cards are available as well as Waves Sound Grid and the whole family of Waves both uh, effects as well as recording a network type situation there. So first of all it's open and able to plug into anything and that's very important as a benefit because of the various networks and protocols that exist whether it's MADI or Dante or, or Waves or an existing React. Perhaps you're a, a client that has a number of the Roland Snakes already plug into this, it works and runs at 96K. And that brings me to my next uh, acronym, part of the acronym, HR, high resolution. 96 kilohertz end to end. You can clock it down, but the benefit there is that the whole Roland family of products, the five different models of digital snakes, our personal mixing system, our recording system has always been 96 capable. So now you can use those existing products and be clocked right up to a full 96K. The last point, CA, part of ORCA, is configurable architecture. And that's probably one of the most exciting points in this console, the ability to be able to configure your console the way you need it. And the benefit is, is at front of house position, at monitor position, if you're a broadcaster, if you're a theater application, you all have different structures you'd like to uh, set up for your mixer. Let me show you an example of that. If I go into our menu system and look at the setup and go into mixer configuration, there you will see a, an ability to punch in how many of each of resources you need. And this console has 128 audio paths to configure the way that you wish. So you can see input channels, mains, subgroups, auxiliary, mix minus, etc. down the line. And right now it's showing us that we have 18 left out of 128. And across the bottom here you see how many of your resources are used up. Not unlike what you see when you plug in your iPhone or iPad and see that, how many pictures, how many videos, how many applications you have in memory uh, in those devices. The same concept exists here with all your resources. So if I simply want to go into my input channels, right now I have 63. Say I need to add a few more. Let's add, you know, another nine. We do that. Now, when we do that, we're up at 72. Simple as that. So the benefit there is being able to, to configure what is normally a fixed structure in a lot of consoles. In fact, most consoles in this class does not have this. You're fixed into a set number of buses, a set number of matrices or, or the like. And so, for example, a monitor position will be able to not bother with mains. Often we're used to hijacking other things like matrices and main buses to be able to use them as auxiliary buses, for example. This way you're able to jump right in there. The patch bay allows you to access all of this for up to 300 different inputs, all at 96K. So this mixer configuration screen gives you the ability to basically uh, structure your mixer in the way you need it for your application. As far as the way the patch bay works, it's then able to take any of those particular uh, inputs and use them. And in this sense, if I hit the slot area, you can see all the different um, slots or I.O. that is uh, available for you to patch from, whether it be from your iPad, whether it be from the USB interface that's there, whether it be from one of your card slots, like a Dante card slot, that's all available right here for you to access. The other part of the configurable architecture then has to play into how you use the faders and the knobs and the buttons. And that's an equally important part of what configurable architecture 
means. So you have three banks of eight faders plus fully assignable four for mission critical type um, channels. You've got assignable knobs and buttons here. You've got solo monitor, scene, record, uh, comms type section here, as well as a great touch screen that allows you to simply touch a particular channel strip. You've got the uh, ability to touch your EQ, all your knobs and buttons then change colors to match your interface. So in the area of configuring your mixer, whether it's 40 channels or whether it's 96 channels, the interface has to adapt to what you like to use it as. So the workflow uh, is very adaptable. So in summary then, open, high resolution, configurable architecture is what Orca brings to the table. And it's really for those that uh, want the flexibility when you're mixing. So you're not tied to a 48 channels. Maybe there's time where you need 56 and you're stuck and you have to bring in a submix. Uh, this solves that problem. It's also the, the ability to adapt to the way you are used to working already or perhaps some new ways in which will be more efficient for you. So be sure to check this uh, new product out at Full Compass. Dot com or talk to your full compass sales representative.